Hi guys, it's uh, it's Matt Corley here from Console Domination. Today with us, um, we have a very, very special guest with us today. Uh, from Rooster Teeth, we have Bernie, we have Gus, and we have Jack. Hello guys, how hey, are you? Not to mention we do have Gav and Pete as well, from, from CD as well. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I suppose guys, just to, just to kick it off, first question out of the, out of the pack, I suppose, is probably the way to say it. Um, where did the name Rooster Teeth actually come from? It's um, quite a unique name. It's quite a point yeah. story. Well, first of all, when you make a brand name for something, you don't have no idea it's going to last over a decade. So uh, the story was we came out with a trailer for Red vs. Blue. And the initial trailer was really kind of a proof of concept for the idea for what the show was going to be. Because it it's very easy now that you've seen it to understand what it is, where you use a video game to make a movie. But when I was trying to explain it to my friends, they were like, this, are you going to make cutscenes in a game? I'm like, no, no, no. It's like, so you're going to make a cartoon about a game? It's like, no, no, here, just, here, to go microphone said, you say this, now you say this. And then I went home and cut together this trailer, and at the end of it were two characters talking to each other. Uh, so the trailer only had like a lot of second and a half of footage yeah. that actually looks like what Red vs. Blue was. And what the trailer was, was this funny thing about talking about the Red vs. Blue war and it's a narrator being very serious, and the subtitle guy is you know, subtitling along, and then all of a sudden he starts paraphrasing, it's it lazy. And then the narrator starts yelling at the subtitle guy, the subtitle guy is writing messages back, and they're having an argument with one another, which is very much in the spirit of Rivers Blue. Well, the subtitle guy calls the narrator a cockbite in there, <laughs> and that became essentially like the first like catchphrase. Like Once that trailer went out, everyone started using that phrase. And so when it came to time to make the name of the company, few episodes into Red vs. Blue, it was taking off and it had to become a real business, we decided to name it Cockbite Productions, we thought that'd be funny. <laughs> but the state of Texas and the U.S. wouldn't let us register the name Cockbite. And one of our other guys pointed out saying, a lot of people that watch our show are guys, if they end up with a credit card charge to Cockbite.com, their wives are going to beat the hell out of them. <laughs> Whereas it's kind of an inside nod to the audience at the time, we named the company Rooster Teeth. And it just has expanded so much over the years. We didn't expect this like inside <laughs> joke would come to encompass so many different brands and so yeah, many. We've been regretting it for ten and a half. Pretty much, years. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But after a while, you know, brands kind of transcend what they mean. After a while, like brands don't make a lot of sense; they just become to be what they are. Like Amazon, I don't think of tall women or you know rivers in the jungle when I say Amazon. I just think of Amazon as for books. So it's like you know you don't really think where these things come from, but that doesn't really make sense. No, I'm just interested to know. Yeah. Yeah. So you you studied at university filmmaking or no? I was a computer science student, so software engineering essentially. Yeah. Jack is one of the only people in the whole company who has a degree in filmmaking. Yeah, oh. yeah, I'm one of the few. Oh, and, wow. yeah. At Achievement Hunter, I'm one of two people that have degrees actually. So, <laughs> yeah, it's weird though because like. You know, it, when I talk to people about this, like, oh, do I need to go to college for this? And I'm always like, oh, yeah, you should go to college. And I'm like, well, Jeff didn't go to college. Gavin didn't go to college. Michael didn't go to college. Rating. I was like, okay, shit. I can't really back that up. You know, it's like, it helps out. It certainly helped me out because it gave me a good base and, you know, knowledge of what I do now. But, yeah, as far, as far as actually working, you know, with a film degree and actually doing film work with a film degree, that's unheard of for the, most of my friends that, you know, are now serving coffee in Los Angeles. So, yeah. Yeah, it's someone, I own a production company but don't have a degree in film. Yeah. Like I got involved with film, I made a movie uh, with my production partner Matt. We made a movie so I wouldn't have to go to film classes. I thought, why well, spend all that money on film classes? I'll just make a movie and I'll probably learn everything I need to know by the time I'm done with that first movie. And it took a year and a half, but I, yeah, I was, I needed, I learned everything I needed to know. I felt like. What actually happened to that movie? Is there any way to say it? Um, no. Uh, there's, it was on VHS. So nobody even has me. Oh, so player. You, know, yeah. you guys are retro. I love it. We wear it in Australia. <laughs> no, right, right. So uh, it's yeah. So it's well, I have. There's a few copies of it, but uh, we had an offer to buy it uh, for more than what we made it for. But we made it for nine thousand dollars. So it's really not that impressive. Uh, but it was it was a little enough money that we thought, uh, why don't we hold on to it ourselves? Uh, and like either hold on to the story or kind of hold on to this story of that being our first movie and maybe we can do something else or else with it down the road. What, um, what would have been the moment, I guess, for you guys where you were taking something like Rooster Teeth and Red vs. Blue for fun and then pushing it a little bit further to thinking, hang on, this is going to like explode and take off? What was a, that sort of moment like? I think it's when it did explode. You know, we, we <laughs> yeah. started in, uh, in April of 2003 
I remember on May 5th, it got linked uh, on, the same day it got linked on Slashdot, Fark, and Penny Arcade. And Slashdot and Fark were much bigger sites back then, so it was a huge surge of traffic. And people were just, you know, tons of comments, people talking about how awesome they thought it was. And then that, I think, was like the first moment where it's like, holy shit, this could be, re this could be something. Did you get like put on the, I guess, on the spot, like say back then when you guys were just, I guess, messing around with the idea, having someone a lot bigger? at the time come up to you guys and say, hey, we'd like to interview you and have a chat. And, like, what would be the, what I'm trying to get at is, like us right here now, talking to you guys, this for us is huge. For you back then when you like we're just sort of starting, you know what I mean? That, like, was, that was Penny Arcade. With Penny Arcade. So and here we are in PAX Australia. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all those years ago, this is predates any of the PAXs. Yeah, it was uh, Tycho linked us in his daily blog. And uh, it was that kind of endorsement by somebody who is already, you know, revered in the video game community, uh, and then it, you know, slash dot as well and Fark. But yeah, I mean, Tycho, uh, Gabe and Tycho were one of the first people to ever reach out to us and uh, like, you know, to tell other people, hey, you should watch this. And uh, that's I think a big reason why people, uh, you know, read Tycho's blog is you know for that uh, that uh, process of discovery, mm -hmm. and it, we were really happy to be part of that. So you know, we've been a part of PAX since day one. You know, we've always. Been very appreciative of everything that Penny Arcade did to help us launch in the early years. I suppose that's why you guys are here in Australia then for yeah. So the first missed, packs? I've missed one PAX ever. I had to miss because of a family emergency. Missed one of the PAXs in Seattle like last year, the two years ago. You've been to every single iteration of PAX. I've been to every PAX Prime, every PAX East, and now PAX Australia. That's wow. a shrinking group of people. Yeah, it was a small number to begin with. So yeah. I think it was only like 2,000 people at the first PAX. The first PAX that we went to, that was the first place where we ever tried to sell, maybe the first place, but where we had a concentrated group of fans where we were going to try to sell merchandise and DVDs. I think we sold them in the hallway. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got a folding table. and uh, yeah. so something like, like the trunk of a car. I like, came to buy some DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the very first event we ever did was one in Florida. So that's an event that doesn't exist anymore. And uh, I remember they invited Jeff and I to come out and do a panel. And I guess an afterthought, I took an extra suitcase and I put some DVDs in it and stuff. And we did our panel, and afterwards I was like, we're just going to be out in the hallway hanging out if anybody wants With a suitcase. to come buy something. There's pictures of me like selling DVDs out of the suitcase <laughs> in the hallway, you know? And uh, that was like the very first convention we ever went to. Yeah. Nice. So Red vs. Blue was the first big explosion. Mm -hmm. From there was Achievement Hunter. No, there was a lot of other shows along the way, yep. and even after Achievement Hunter started, well, we had shorts too before right. Achievement Hunter, right? And the, the shorts, did, I think they were before yeah, Achievement Hunter. very funny, actually. Yeah, the, yeah. Short, the shorts did really good. That's yeah, they were all about the same time. Yeah. Like, we went five years before we moved into the Congress office, okay. and the Congress office is the one where we started doing shorts and started doing Achievement Hunter yeah, there Yeah, forced to join the Achievement Hunter. Yeah. Well, so we had yeah. Panics and Strangerhood and other shows. Supreme Surrender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and how long, it was a while before Achievement Hunter really kind yeah. of grew to... Oh, yeah. I'm sorry? Oh, sorry, will the, will, the, will the shorts ever come back? Well, I didn't know you guys were having a little conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Our community has actually asked us to ask you that question, will the shorts ever come well, back? Well, I think that we did an announcement that we're, we're bringing shorts back, right? We're, yeah. yeah, we're doing yeah. some, but I think we're, we're gearing up to make a bigger, like, live action kind of announcement. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got Gavin there now. He does a lot of slow motion as well. Um, you know, we're we're always trying to do stuff bigger. You know, we always want to make. You know, with Red vs. Blue in season eight, we started adding custom animation. Now we're launching original IP with Ruby. Um, you know, we want to go bigger and better all the time because this industry, the online video industry, is growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, we've always felt like we've been at the forefront of that, uh, and we want to continue to do that if we can. Yeah, I suppose there was no, there's no real. I mean. When you guys started out and you and when you came up with the idea with red versus blue, it was such a unique idea, wasn't it? I mean, it's something that that never really got done. You used a gaming a gaming console, uh, a game that was obviously you know well well supported throughout the industry, right. and and you just <laughs> you, you put that absolute awesome spin on it of of making it very very funny and and people actually talking over it and it's just absolutely brilliant. So I mean. Where did the idea come from? Well, I was uh, I always wanted to be a, a filmmaker, narrative filmmaker. My background's in live action. Uh, and so I kind of stumbled into animation in a very backwards way. Machinima, the way that we do it, is a lot more like live action filmmaking than it is like animation. Because what you see on screen is actually people controlling the characters in real time. It's almost like digital puppeteering. 
So you do rehearsals mm -hmm. and you do takes and what you're seeing is actual recorded live performance. You don't do takes in animation. You, you, you plot it, you animate it, and you say, well, that to work, and you tweak it, you know, basically. Um, so that form of animation machine was a lot more like live action. And so I think it was uh, a combination of just wanting to make more narrative fiction content uh, and just having the ability to do this, and they, they all just kind of came together at the right place and time. And you chose Halo because it was it was a popular game, or was it a game that you guys played? Or? Played it all the time. I mean, really, <laughs> and it was like there was like one or two, kind of, for lack of a better term, bugs in the original Halo, which made it possible to shoot what we were shooting. Um, like for instance, the big one was when you put the gun, the pistol, in the character's hands, and then you looked all the way down your feet. For whatever reason, at the last second, the character would look down and then look back up, <laughs> and so their heads were up. So it's if they had that, they had that. We just been pointing our guns at each other the entire series, and that would have been a very aggressive combo. Going back to the trailer that you talked about earlier, yeah. in the trailer, their guns are up. Yeah, because we didn't know about the bug yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you go back and ever watch that trailer, it's the only video we ever put out like that. Guns out, the guns are all up. Yeah. Do you, do you guys get, like, when it first happened, I know since Red vs. Blue exploded, there has been, I would call them a little bit knockoffs, like the idea's been taken, maybe expanded or changed. But mm -hmm. were you guys, Annoyed, or did you feel honored that people were like, "Hey, they know this is good, and they're trying to sort of emulate what we've done." Like, uh, obviously, Battlefield Friends is quite big with Machine Man now. Right. Um, does that annoy you a little bit, thinking your ideas? I feel like it's. Annoyed, or does it feel good? I feel like it's a vindication more than anything that yeah. maybe you know we were doing the right thing. And I think when we started, it was a lot harder. You know, when we started doing Red vs. Blue, YouTube didn't exist, so video distribution was hard. When we started, you know, capture cards were like fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> now you can buy them, you know, at a at a electronic store for a hundred dollars. So I think it's a combination of theater modes and games. Yeah, it's a combination of the the, the, the platform via YouTube being easier, and then like the democratization of tools like theater mode and the cheaper hardware, just making it more accessible to everyone. You know, and I think I, I, I think it makes it makes me feel good. You're a pioneer. Yeah. It's a pioneer of an industry. It's, it's very good. But I think that Red vs. Blue 2 is, um, I think initially it was very good for the art of machinima, and then maybe over time it became a, a little bit of a detraction in that it's like when people would make things, they would just gravitate towards, you know, there's, there's thousands of video games, and everyone wants to make stuff. It seemed like in Halo for a long period of time. And um, it's, I, I, that was one of the things I found frustrating was like, it's like it's great people are making more machine I'm really happy about that, but there's tons of other games. It's like I would I would like look at things like um, uh, Steam and or, or Source, the Source engine that runs Half Life, and they had tools for lip sync in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, You know, and yeah. Naughty Dog put in tools in Uncharted where they could put in Machinima tools where you have lip sync and all that. And it was like, wow, it's like, but you know, it's like because of the success, I think of Rippers Blue, a lot of people gravitated towards doing that. I just had a conversation with somebody at Com last week. He said, I'm starting a series. It's called uh, it's called blue versus red, but it doesn't have anything to do with what, uh, what your thing is. It's any you. Do you have any advice for me? I said, yeah, don't call it blue versus red. Yeah, I go yeah, yeah. because you're gonna trust it from the guy who named his company Rooster Teeth. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna live with that. And then if it's not, if it doesn't have anything to do with our show, don't give the YouTube commenters that ammunition. You know, there's no reason for that. Yeah. And, and I can tell he didn't like the advice, and I was like, well, that's <laughs> okay. Well, so, YouTube yeah. can be like quite harsh sometimes when you see. Some of the comments that people post, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I try to ignore. I, I, I browse YouTube like this with my yeah. hand over the comments. I just watch the video. Yeah. I'm actually the opposite. I read, I read it all, and I, just, yeah, I, I try to build a good filter for it. it. Makes you laugh, though. I mean, it's just like I mean, you guys are producing entertainment for people to watch and enjoy. Yet, you know, you're going to have the slaters, you're going to have the haters. Yeah, can I tell you something though? Yeah. Is something I've learned over the years is that the people who show up and it's like make an episode of something, and they show up and they pick it apart. They go, "This is garbage," and "This is shit," and blah blah blah, and everything else. It might not seem like it. They're enjoying the show. That's just how they enjoy things, and it's it's weird to think about it like that. Really? Yeah, but I had to put it in that perspective too when I would explain uh, Red vs. Blue uh, to the people who make the game. I explained it was like, you know, we're playing your game. We're just not playing it the way you play it or the way you designed it to be played. But it's still fun. It's still play, and it's still interactive. And that's what we're doing with it. So the haters and stuff. It's like they're they're having their time as long as they don't try to like encroach on anybody else's good time. I you know I'm fine with it. Yeah, we can, we can take a little heat. Yeah, I think haters, in my opinion, it's something we call here is tall poppy syndrome. Like, if something explodes and is popular, and he's a real tall poppy, yeah, <laughs> you're always going to get those people who try and knock it down just because they want it. You know? No, absolutely. That's yeah. what makes them happy. I think. I think in America, the expression is the tallest tree gathers the most weight. Is yes. yeah, the one I've yeah, yeah, very similar. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard that? 
I've never heard that. Before. <laughs> you know, where I heard that from. I heard that from uh, Peter Moore after Sim City got cut all the heat. So uh, maybe it's not American. It's a British thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on to uh, I suppose immersion, which is one of my favourite shows. I absolutely do. love watching it. Oh, thanks. Um, it's obviously like a I suppose it's a cross between a, a MythBusters versus video game experiments or something. Yeah. In the real field. Which is like Mythbusters meets jackass because there's like a yeah. torture element to it. Too, that I really, <laughs> I have to, we have to get that in every single episode. Yeah. Have, has any fans or, or people written into you guys to say, hey, I've got an awesome idea for an immersion episode? They've said that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what, I suppose, what's been your strangest ones? Uh, a lot of them are just like, they, 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 it, it, it seems like a good idea, but then it's like, what, I don't get what we, you know how we do that. It's like, um, you know, I just played Saints Row, so you should take Gavin and throw him off a building, like, oh, <laughs> you know, or something, or something like that. Um, but I have yet to find anything. It's got to be something that's interesting, compelling in a game, but that can translate to the real world. That would seemingly be impossible. In the Actually, world. I heard a good one. Someone submitted it on a forum somewhere where uh, they're talking about Assassin's Creed, about like, the high-diving Assassin's Creed. Yeah. But do it into like a swimming pool. But they have like a target where they had to land it. So you like get them really, really high off a building, or a building, and then make them jump up, into it. Or a ship. Yeah. 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 Like ship yeah. pool. They hit the pool? No, 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 no. I'm saying like go to an actual swimming pool, but then have like a floating target for them to yeah. hit. And so they land in the something. pool. Well, I mean, it's just like a the giant swimming pool. Like a, but then you said put them up really high? Yeah, like a, like a diving board. Like like one of the, like the Olympic okay, diving okay. things. You I know, was picturing like, like putting them up here. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> 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 it's got to go like the 1920s with the big ladder. And the <laughs> diving board and the bat. Uh, Lots of water. Yeah. 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 I think so, we had one of the ideas from our community wall was, um, you know, like Nico in, in, in Grand Theft Auto 4. You know, obviously he's a normal guy, thug, um, but... Yes, yeah, pilot's helicopter. Yeah. yeah. You're getting a normal guy to pilot a helicopter. Going, yeah, that might be a bit difficult though. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, yeah. might we crash a 500,000 dollar helicopter <laughs> yeah. for a web video? Yeah, I mean, some of them are like, we like to do, but they're just kind of ridiculous. But that is a very concept driven show. Uh, and it, sometimes they're few and far between the, the episodes of Immersion because we have to have a good concept. Um, and uh, I'm proud to say we have nine really good ones for the upcoming season of Immersion. Eight left. We already did one with the guys driving the car. Oh, that, yeah. was, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, you got, yeah. Any, got any new? What can you share with us? What the uh, next episode might entail? Maybe not the next one, uh, but it, Jack, it's so frustrating. I absolutely sure why not. Uh, we had one that's based on Assassin's Creed, um, which is it has to do with the stealth of Assassin's Creed and masking yourself in a crowd. Um, and I won't get too much into it because part of the ways we do it are really fun and funny. Then fuck Jack, you asshole. You, it's like, oh yeah, we yeah, just yeah. had RTX. Yeah, we have perfect We just had RTX. The day after RTX ends, Jack and me, because hey, you know what would be funny? That Assassin's Creed idea for Mercy, if you did it at RTX, because those are people that would recognize Gavin and Michael, and then we'd actually have a test oh, use right now. So they'd like, where the fuck are you? Where were you 72 hours ago? I was about head of my own shit. That was a great idea. Yeah, that was, that's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. We did a PAX. We did a PAX Prime. You spoiled it. No, no, Pax Pro. No, I wouldn't say. Wouldn't say. That RTX environment, walking to the floor, people are looking for you, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's and also our like, home turf. So yeah, yeah, and they would have spotted Gavin and stopped it. Well, like, oh, hey, Gavin. Just, you just stretch out. Just like release an episode every two months, and then that'll be you know what, sixteen months from now. So boom. Nah, I don't like what you think. Yeah, don't forget that. There you yeah. go. <laughs> so. so, but that's not what we're gonna do. It's it's another specific idea related to it, but it should be a lot of fun. You're gonna release a. Uh, I mean, I don't, well, I apologize if it's already been released or if you have something already, but uh, with the immersion, are you releasing a, a DVD box set like you did with Red vs. Blue? Or no, it's box? because they're, um, it, it's, we start off the show with showing the video game that's based in, uh, and we just, like, for home video purposes, that's a lot of clearances for, mm. um, you know, the individual video, it, it, we, can, we can show the, the video game in a YouTube video, but then when you put a compilation of all these different games on one DVD, it's just a mess. So it's just like... It seems like a good, fun YouTube show or online show, uh, but not necessarily a great home video product. We'll see, you know, what it comes down to. So I'm just interested, like you're here in PAX Australia this year. So what's your fan base from Australia? Do you have an idea of how large it is in Australia? Like, have you guys gone really crazy outside of America as well? Like, it's a, we have a good size audience here in Australia. Yeah. Like we have a lot of fans out here. And it seems like the last couple of years, they've, they, the last couple of years, they've really gotten a lot bigger too. Oh. Like. We can track like uh, website traffic and see what the most popular cities in the world are. And I want to say Sydney and Melbourne are both in the top five. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're both above any U.S. city. Really? Really? Yeah. 
That's awesome. Yeah, most of our big tracking cities for uh, the Rishi website are not U.S. cities. So you guys London been is the very, biggest. very busy. Yeah. London is three days. Yeah. Yeah. You guys been to London, of course, many times. Well, we've been down here a few times too. It's always been a great experience. Yeah. Like our biggest fan event is down here uh, in Australia. Yeah, the biggest one for a long time was in Toronto, in Canada, and then we came. Gavin and I came to one down here that was run by Katie. It was just enormous. Yeah, routine. Yeah. But yeah, it's funny. I mean, like I came down here in April for Supernova. And uh, so, like, they lump us in with like real celebrities. So you know, you see, you know, these really big people, and uh, well, and, like Barbara Eden and yeah, uh, like David Hasselhoff is there. It's like wow, it's pretty you, you, very, specifically, very specifically, very <laughs> specifically, Helfer. We, we were we were on a bus and every day with Trisha Helfer. We were just oh, like. Yeah. Gavin and I were slowly like creeping our way up the seats and <laughs> a little closer. Every time we got in the bus, we got a little further up. But it's it's so weird. You see like these real celebrities, and then like we have our booth. You know, we have like Hanabi, like where we do all our signs for for uh, Red vs Blue stuff. Like I had my booth. I was by myself, and I had this giant line, and all these people would buy, like walk by like Ray Park, this dark mall. He's like, Yeah, who the hell are you? Like, what do you do? And it's like I make dumb videos. <laughs> I've got these giant lines, and you see like you know like the people from Doctor Who, and it's like their line is just, it's like it, it's it's wild. To me, like, the, the, the best, Australian fans are amazing. The best part about it too is that our audience, like, I remember how one of the smartest things we ever did was uh, we named our podcast the Drunk Tank when it first came out, <laughs> and we had, like kind of culture around like being drunk and playing video games. So our fans, in general, if they tend to bring us anything, they bring us bottles of booze. And so we go back oh, to the nice. green room at these oh, yeah. events. <laughs> we go back to these green room events, and we have almost like a full bar by the time we get yeah. back to the end of the day. And everyone in the green room, all the other special guests are like. Well, this is awesome. <laughs> I got a box of chocolates. <laughs> I'll trade that for a bottle of uh, Johnny Walker. <laughs> so, so. so I suppose uh, wrapping it up because uh, we are. Uh, I'm sure, I'm, I can't believe how fast this is all gone. Um, but wrapping it up, uh, we were talking about retro games just earlier, right? I mean, I, I also um, and, and so does Pete as well. We work in, within the retro domination side as well, which is the brother side to console domination. Um, and we're keen to know, I suppose, what your favorite retro consoles are. What, what some, some of the stuff that you were you, you grew up with, yeah. Some of the consoles, some of the Jesus. games you used to play with. Well, I played the Super Nintendo like crazy when I was a kid. Like, I, I mean, I got started on this on the Nintendo, but uh, you know, Super Nintendo really got my my kicks on. But I used to play arcade games. That was my big thing. Like, I remember I played Atari Warriors was the very first oh, game yeah. I ever played, like the stand up arcade. And it was one of those things where, like, you know, I was four years old at the grocery store. My mom would go shopping. My dad would sit there with me, and he'd pull over a chair so I could reach the controls, and I'd sit there and just play, you know, and. That's like I guess some of my fondest memories are like having birthday parties at arcades and stuff. So, so mo almost more so than actual consoles. So that was my thing. So the the, uh, the first video game I ever played, and it wasn't a console, was uh, was Pong. And my dad found a broken cocktail Pong machine. I don't know if you ever saw it. It was like the oh. table you would sit at at a bar, and two people would sit across yeah, each other and drink on it. He found a broken one in a dumpster, brought it back to the apartment we were living in, and he fixed it. Oh, that's and I was, God, I was four years old at the time. And it was like, I, I would sit there forever playing it, and then, you know, they saw how much I loved it, so they bought me an Atari 2600. So I always feel fondly about cocktail, video game, you know, arcade machines, yeah. and then the, the 2600, because that was like my, the beginning of my indoctrination and my love of... Uh, of do, you have, do you have a couple now? A couple of cocktails at home? No, I don't. My house is really small. <laughs> I don't have any room for it. I've got an Atari Warriors in my garage, so I'm very happy about that. Cool. Yeah, did, did the joystick still rotate and all that? Uh, no. Yes, yes, yes. They have the little knobs on them, the little Konami knobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That I've got. A, I've got an Atari Warriors. I've got a Street Fighter Two, Mortal Kombat Two, and I got a Tron too. I got like a real Tron. Which is nice. I, mean, I love it. <laughs> I love Tron. I love yeah. Tron. Awesome. Yeah. It's I was an arcade kid. It's funny you say that. I actually grew up when I was a little kid in a fish and chip shop. We had arcade machines. Yeah. And my, I had two games: Black Tiger and Akari Warriors. We used to just, hell yeah. It was free credits, you know. Yeah, yeah. Play it all the time. So is that a place where like, it's always interesting to me because when I was a kid, I was an arcade kid and I had a geographic map in my head of the city of where arcade games were and like like where they were located. And in America, arcade games were located in arcades but then also in convenience stores. Is that, where were they? Well, it's like oh, yeah. they sell fish and chips, hamburgers, takeaway food. And an arcade machine. Okay. And really? arcade machines are in the corner just while you wait for your Yeah, we didn't have that at all. Yeah, but we had arcades. Pizza place. Yeah, Pizza Hut. Yeah, we didn't have I, I would go to Pizza Hut all the time. Yeah. They had oh, they had arcades? Arcade they didn't have yeah. arcades. They always had one or two machines yeah. in like a pizza places, yeah. but not in non hamburger places in the US. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like Mr. Gaddy yeah. stores. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember like laundromats too would have them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good spot. Laundromats should bring that back. That's a good business. They got quarters. Yeah, I remember yeah, like yeah. the local supermarket out near me, they had the double dragon, right? So I used to ride my bike down there and it's like, it's a double dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about yourself, Ben? What did you... That was an arcade kid, definitely. Yeah, and it's it like, I love that, 
retro is interesting because retro is very specific to everybody. You know, like we'll talk to people who watch our videos. Like, what do you think is retro? It's like, oh, the original Xbox. It's like, what? Get that out of here. <laughs> you know, I'm like, sure, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're 17, not their defense. They are 17. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Pokemon is, is retro. <laughs> no, but I, I grew up in arcades, man. It's like, and it's like, I, there were some people who showed up here today, and I was like, look at their t-shirts, going, what is that game? Like, if I. It's interesting to me after all these years if I see an arcade game that I never have heard of before, you know, and that's always really interesting to me because I, I think I played just about every single arcade game. And then I was a Commodore kid growing up too, so, yeah. Commodore 64? Commodore 64, yep. Yeah. Uh, one of the guys uh, that's actually in the room, I can't speak, uh, loves Commodore 64. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a 128, so I was like, oh, yeah. 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 One of my neighbors had a 64, and I think that was like the one of the first times I used a computer was going over and trying to figure out how the fuck do I load games on this game. They put your fast load card into the back. <laughs> they might as well type it all in, then walk away, make a cup of tea, and it's still loaded yeah. up, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, right. Then, and then the guy goes, like, what? Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> load, comma, quote mark, some shit, quote. Like, okay. <laughs> Star comma, come on. I can sit here to this day, yeah. Well, guys, look, thank you very, very much for your time. I don't know if you guys yeah, have Just before sorry. we go, like, because our interviews yeah. are short, and a lot of people. There's a, obviously the bad of the last 10 years for dating is speed dating, to get to know your partner. So I've actually got 10 speed dating questions. Oh, we're, ready. Ready. we're ready. Let's okay. find out. We're so, so it's actually, I've got two answers. You All think right. each answer corresponds. I'll go one, one, one. All right. and we'll go right. through them, guys. So, so it's multiple choice. Of two. I've got it. All right. Okay. So first person or third person? First person. Third. Third. Red team, blue team. Blue, red, blue. <laughs> <laughs> relaxing holiday or skydiving and paintball? Relaxing holiday. Relaxing. 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 Blonde brunette or redhead? Blonde brunette. Brunette. <laughs> <laughs> a night of sex or an LAN party? What was it? What? A night of sex okay. or an LAN party? I didn't even hear the second part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's Usually the answer. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beer or spirits? Spirits. Beer. 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 Fact or fantasy? Oh, well, no. I would say fact. Like, where does that sound? Fact. Fantasy. Yeah. Fact. Breasts or butt? Wow. <laughs> All the above. <laughs> Boot. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, Batman or Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Batman. Batman. <laughs> and what's the one thing that you cannot live without? Internet. Internet. Beer. <laughs> you, could, you could live without the internet, but you could live with beer? Oh, the internet. Internet and beer. Internet, yeah, there you go. Beer and it. Beer and it. There you go. It's nice. nice. near the future. Fair trademark. <laughs> <laughs> it's recorded. Uh, guys, well, thank you very, very much for your time. We hey, really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Um, if you guys want to check out Roosterteeth, feel free. Guys, plug away. Oh, sure. You can visit us at roosterteeth.com or on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash roosterteeth. Bruce like a bird, teeth like a dentist. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks very much. Thanks. Enjoy Australia. Enjoy PAX. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys at PAX as well. So thanks, guys. Thank Have a great time in Aussie. Great. Yeah, yeah, thanks. thanks.